to talk about very quickly because I only have 12 minutes and I got this clock up here counting down. And I know I'm not supposed to sell things, but the HBO movie's available on Amazon.com. <laughs> and uh, I weren't able to, they actually wanted to buy it and give it to everybody, but they couldn't figure out how to order it from the Borg at the Time Warner building. Now, where we got the really good radical collaboration was with people that made the movie. Emily Gerson Sainz, the mother of, a, mother of an autistic child, Mick Jackson, a great visual thinker, Christopher Munger, the writer, a word thinker. So it's visual thinker, word thinker, working together. We gotta think about different ways of thinking. You know, in my work with animals, you know, you gotta get away from language, totally get away from language to understand it. Animals' world is sensory-based. It's not word-based. You know, there's been some brain scan research that showed that the normal mind drops out the details. And in my work with animals, I had to look at detail. Look at how that animal's balking at the sunbeam. This place here, they wanted to tear down this whole cattle handling facility. You know what, the cattle were scared of the flag. Sometimes the most obvious is the least obvious. You've got to sometimes look for the most obvious. So I'd get down in the chutes, see things like the shadows that would scare the animals. I see pictures in my head, and the movie showed exactly how my mind works, because Nick Jackson, the director, was a total visual thinker. But visual thinkers are not good on organization, so I'd have Christopher Munger, the writer, he kept the organization going. I realized my thinking was different when I was in my 40s, and I asked people about church steeples. And I was shocked to find out that most people generalize generic church steeples. I only see specific ones. And they just flash up like Google for images. Just like this. Just like how the movie showed it. And if you want some snow on it, I can make it snow. Would you like a thunderstorm or a wedding? I can put that in there too. And when I design equipment, I can totally test run the equipment in my mind. I thought everybody could test run equipment in their mind. I didn't know that most people didn't have that kind of visual thinking. And you know, when you're a weird nerd, nobody wants to talk to you. So I learned I had to sell my work. And that's the drawing that starred in the HBO movie. And they duplicated all my projects absolutely exactly. And the nerd side of me really likes that. And there's the uh, drawing that they uh, built the dip vat system off of. Now I've noticed some interesting things. As the industry went from hand drawing to computers, Old folks, they went fine on the computers. But some of the young people that have never worked by hand, and they've never built anything, were making a lot of very strange mistakes on drawings. Like they didn't know where the center of the circle was. They were making 25 foot long gates. They were making all kinds of stuff that wouldn't work. And I'm really concerned that the schools have taken out so many of the hands-on classes. They teach practical problem solving. We need practical problem solving. I used to joke around that I had a huge internet connection in my brain, deep into the visual cortex. And this DTI imaging showed that I did. And I got a really big one up here. And some more fancier imaging up at the University of Pittsburgh that was paid for by DARPA research. That's uh, the uh, defense department for people with head injuries. They found out that 26 only 26% of my language circuit was working. You know, they had to work on me really, really hard to get that going. I want to emphasize autism is a big spectrum. At one end of the spectrum, you got Einstein. You know, you take out a few social circuits, you get geek circuits, you do all kinds of creative things. At the other end of the spectrum, you may have somebody very severe with epilepsy and they're nonverbal. Now, I am a photorealistic visual thinker who thinks in pictures. Now, there's another kind of mind. It's the pattern thinker. This is your programmer. This is your mathematician. This is a not my mind. That praying mantis is made out of a single sheet of folded paper. No cutting, no scotch tape. And what you see in the background, that's the folding pattern. That's not my mind. Now, this is an important slide, because I have found that there's different kinds of thinkers. There's the photorealistic visual thinker like me that absolutely cannot do algebra. I got great long-term memory, but I don't have a very good short-term working memory. And I'm seeing a lot of kids who cannot do algebra that need to be jumped right to geometry. So how to make, get through college? I gotta thank the math fads of the early 60s uh, because I didn't have to take algebra. I had to take probability, matrices, and statistics. Then there's the pattern thinker. These are the kids when they're in fourth grade may need to be five grades ahead in math, but they're gonna have trouble with reading. Then you've got the verbal thinkers. These, are not, these guys are not good at drawing. 
These are the guys that we need to keep the structure and the linear structure into things being done by the visual thinkers. Then some people are auditory. Just to show you that there is two ways of solving mathematical formulas. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, that's the verbal way. And that's the geometry way, where it's done in a diagram, a visual thinking way. And there's some people that say that algebra is the prerequisite for geometry. There's one little problem. Geometry was invented before algebra. Little problem there. Now, when different people collaborate, when the different kinds of minds get together, they complement each other. I've found that in my own work. I'm good at the visual thinking things in my research. You know, we did some pioneering work on cattle temperament and how that affects um, weight gain. And the cattle that get all excited and crazy, they gain less weight. When we did that 15 years ago, that was looked at as totally a radical. Uh, it's now been duplicated a bunch of times. Well, my students are really good at the math part. Now, you know, the Japanese nuclear power plant needed a visual thinker like me. Okay, the mathematicians, they know how to design a nuclear reactor. But when I found out why this plant melted down, I was shocked. I was reading a lot of stuff. Well, you know, the earthquake came, tore down all the power lines, emergency generators came on, coolant pumps were running, everything was cool, everything was nice, and then the tsunami came and drowned the generators. See, the problem is, they had no backup for the seawall. That's not the kind of mistake I would make. I would have walked around in that plant. I don't, know, I don't know how the nuclear power plant part works, but all I know is if the coolant pump stops, you're in a lot of trouble really fast. And I know how pumps work, the generators work, and I could have seen the water either breaking the wall or coming over the wall, filling up the generator room. Electric panels are only this far off the floor. They're going to go zzz, zzz, nothing's going to work, and it's going to get hot really, really, really quickly. Another kind of place where you need the engineering mind, more the math mind, and the visual thinker. You remember the whole disaster with airbags? The airbags are killing little babies. I would have taken one look at those videos and would have gone, wait a minute, there's no way this is going to work. You see, the engineering spec is that it had to hold in an adult man with no seatbelt. Well, you know, he better put on his seatbelt, and we're going to need to have an airbag that's a little more gentle. Just doesn't work. You see, that's where the visual thinker and the math thinker need to work together. Now, the thing is, I have all these pictures in my mind. So how do I form categories? And I find that a lot of normal people are not very good at categorizing problems. Like, for example, um, the dog can do that. When I'm on the leash, I protect my owner. When I'm off the leash, I can go play. And I find in my livestock work that people have a lot of problems categorizing a people problem versus an equipment problem. And they want to get in there and rip down the equipment. But well, remember how I said the most obvious is the least obvious? Well, that thing with the generator, that was a little bit of the most obvious as far as I'm concerned. Now, your BP had lots of safety rules. There was a really interesting article in Fortune magazine about British Petroleum. They were so proud of the fact that they had lowered their slips and falls axes. Like if you visit a BP oil rig and you don't put a lid on your coffee cup, you might fall in the break room and you're going to get written up for that. And they had done a fantastic job of reducing these kinds of accidents. But they forgot about process safety. They forgot about the really important stuff, like sloppy work and pushing, 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 and doing stuff too fast. Been there, worked on those kind of projects. That was a really big disaster. But the different kinds of minds have got to work together. I'm getting very concerned now that our educational system is sort of just forgetting about the visual thinkers, the mathematics thinkers. Things are getting way too verbal. Yeah, we, us visual thinkers, we need the verbal guys because a movie would not have come out very good if we hadn't had Christopher Munger, the writer, keeping Nick in control on, on making the sequence work. He and the writer worked right together. You know, Nick didn't change one thing in that script without consulting Christopher. There's a great scene in the movie where the cattle come down to the water's edge showing how the ramp into the dip vat system should work, and they ruined my design by putting in a piece of metal. People are still doing that today. I went to a plant two days ago, and I have the same kind of inference on a thing called a center track restrainer system. Half the cattle in this country are processed on it. They go down the same kind of little ramp, non-slip little ramp, and they cut off the ramp, and they were jumping the cattle in. This is 35 years later. People have a hard time getting away from this idea of forcing the animal. Well, and I drew them a drawing how to fix it up right. 
my mentor science teacher. He was essential for me because I, even though I got a lot of work skills, and we need to be getting middle school kids exposed to interesting stuff. You know, maybe they need to find out that oil rigs have joysticks and excavators have joysticks. I got to sit in an excavator simulator. It was fun, except I didn't do very well. The bucket hit the cab. That's like really, really bad. <laughs> but we need to be showing middle school kids that there's interesting things out there because the lucky ones that are around these tech areas, like around here, get to come to events like this. It turns them on and motivates them. But then I just got back from an autism meeting where I'm seeing some of the same kind of geeky, nerdy kids, and they're labeled Asperger's, or they're labeled ADHD, or heavens forbid, oppositional defiant. That's just absolutely the worst. Yeah, they're going to turn oppositional defiant. They're not, uh, uh, not uh, motivated. I'm very concerned that our educational system is not stimulating the visual and the pattern thinker. And 10 years ago, this paper came out in a science education journal that visual spatial thinking is getting overlooked. The schools don't test for mathematical, and uh, they test for mathematical, but they don't test for mechanical aptitude, the real visual kinds of thinking. No, bad thing. We need these people. It's a shame that so many of the schools have taken out the visual thinking and hands-on kind of classes. Yes, the community college has them, but that's too late for a lot of these kids. We've got to get them turned on a lot younger. We've got to do that. Hands-on things, those are the things that saved me. I'm also very concerned that a lot of our quirky, nerdy kids, these are the kids that are the creativity for the future. You know, we're having all these cutbacks on education and stuff like that. I'm getting very, very concerned that maybe our country is eating its educational seed corn. Just want you to think about that. I hope I have uh, gotten you to think, and I hope that this conference is going to get some of the quirky, nerdy kids turned on. I have exactly 12 seconds left. 10, <laughs> 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off! Thank you.